Tripods are a great way to stabilize your camera so that your images will look more stable. Uh, if you're not looking for that effect, you might be going with a handheld version of a camera. And sometimes they have ways to stabilize the image to remove some of the shape. But the best way, and for most shots, you want to be on a tripod with the camera. Tripods have three parts. The feet, the legs, and the head. Tripods are typically stored in the bag so that when you unzip the top, you'll see the top of the tripod. When setting up a tripod, the first thing you'll most likely have to do is unlock the legs. There's a small loop right there that you can go ahead and pull the strap and it releases that ring and then you can separate the legs. So you need them separated before you set it up. Now, typically you want the top of the tripod, the top of the tripod head, to be at the height of the person's eyes that you're going to be filming. Once you have that, you want to extend the legs. Now this particular tripod uses levers to extend those legs. So you can see here, if I release this, it unlocks it. And if I push it back in, it uh, locks it up. Also, you'll notice on the bottom of the tripod, it has some uh, things to keep it so that when this is screwed up here, it's nice and soft so you can use it indoors and don't scratch up any floors. And then when you screw it down, you have a little spikier part that has a little bit more friction, which you can use when you're outdoors, especially on ground. Now, some of our tripods, you can see, have missing pieces, so it doesn't have that uh, soft piece on this particular one on all three uh, feet. All right, let's take a look at how it's going to go. So I showed you the levers on this one. So what I'm going to do is hold the tripod here, undo the first lever, and the leg falls down, and I lock it in place. Now this actually has two sections on each leg, so I'm going to go ahead and release the next lever and let it drop down. So I'm going to go through for all three legs, releasing the bottom portion first and then the top portion. Now if it sticks, uh, sometimes you might have to help it slide down, but I like using gravity to do this. And there it is. Now once all the legs are extended and locked, you can spread the legs apart, because remember we unlocked that ring. Now, what keeps the tripod from spreading out too far is actually called a spreader. And so this, these little bars that connect the legs together keep it from going out too far. All right, now that we have the tripod legs extended, let's take a look at the top of the tripod, which is the head. Now, the tripod head has what's known as a pan handle. And so uh, I actually probably should have extended this before I set up all the legs. But let me show you what happens for movement here. So I've got a couple of controls that control which direction this head moves, either up and down, which is tilting, or left to right, which is panning. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen this pan right now, just so I can kind of move it a bit. And then I can show you this pan handle, which lets me control it. So again, there's a lever here. I loosen that lever and bring the pan handle up to what's going to be a comfortable position so when I'm using the camera, I can lock it in place. So I'll lock that in place. And now I can show you the panning motion. So here was that little lever that would lock it. So once I, if I don't want the pan to happen, I would push it into place. Make sure you never push things too far. You don't want to uh, tighten something so much that it actually damages it, and then it stops locking. All right, this lever here is for the tilt motion. So when I undo that, I can go ahead and tilt it out. So to set up the camera, the first thing you want to do is kind of get this close to being level and go ahead and lock it down. And then you can also lock down the pan motion so that it'll be stable as you're connecting a camera to it. All right, what's nice about professional tripods is that they use what's known as a quick release plate. Now, over the years, most amateur tripods also have these quick-release plates. But in the old days, you used to have to screw the bottom of the tripod into the camera, and then when you needed to move it, you had to unscrew the camera and then move. But now, with a quick-release plate, they have uh, different things on them. And this particular one has a little lever, and I can pull it, and now here is the plate. So on the bottom of this plate, it requires a screwdriver. Some plates lets you, lets you, you, let you use a little handle that you can pop up. But in this case, you need to get a screwdriver. So you need to reach into your pocket 
and take out a screwdriver. Now, the screwdrivers I have in my pocket, I'll just show you the variety of them. Uh, you know, you probably have one in your pocket too. Uh, here's a quarter and there's a dime and a penny. But the one that I prefer is using a nickel. So I'm going to use my nickel screwdriver. And then I'm going to go back over here and show you that uh, the little straight blade, that's what I'm going to use to connect it to the camera. All right, let me go ahead and grab one of the cameras that you have access to once we get back onto campus. All right, notice on the bottom of this camera, it's got two holes. One is threaded, so you can screw a screw into it, and one is just straight, which is for a pin. And on the top of this quick release plate, there is a pin, and there's the threaded screw. So you want to make sure that you set it up so that, in this case, the pin goes to the front of the camera. So we'll adjust this, line up the screw and the pin, and I know you can't really see me lining that up, but I'll start it by hand. So I basically lined up the, the screw into the hole that has threads, and I've lined up the pin into the hole that is smooth in it. And now I'm going to use my screwdriver and just tighten this up. And again, I don't want to over tighten it. I want it just tight enough so that this will not move. We need to have a nice stable position. Oh, and I just locked up this strap. So I'm going to go ahead and undo it, get the strap out of the way here, and go ahead and lock it back up. All right. So let's see. I snug it a little bit more. And there it goes. Now, uh, let me adjust this down so you can see the top of the tripod as I'm making adjustments to it. So I'm just going to shorten this a bit so it's easier to see looking down on the tripod. All right, let me tilt my camera down a little bit too. So I'm using a camera here to let me kind of see what we have going on. All right, so you'll notice now there's this opening where the quick release plate was at. So what I'll do is I will make sure that the front of the camera is facing away from the pan handle because we want to have it facing so that we can use the pan handle to turn it in different directions. Now notice on this quick release plate, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little lip on it, something to catch. So what you do is, with the tripod open, with this knob open all the way, you put that lip into the front section of the tripod and then just press down on the back. Now you might have heard that little click, but what that means is that the handle, the little locking handle, has gone ahead and snapped into place. But some of our tripods uh, are a little bit older and they don't always do that. So let's see if I can show you what that looks like underneath here. Uh, hopefully I can get it in close enough. But here's the little handle. And when I put it in there, sometimes it doesn't snap all the way over. So what you have to do is you have to kind of push it all the way over yourself. All right, now what I'm gonna do is put this back so it's close to kind of being level. I wanna make sure my pan handle's locked in place. Now, it used to be on tripods, in order to get everything level, you'd have to adjust each leg. And some tripods still make you do that. It's really a pain. These professional tripods use a mount that lets you look at a little bubble in here. So it's kind of hard to see, but if you've ever seen a carpenter's level, it's got a little air bubble and there's a ring that you're supposed to match it up into. So to do that, there's a knob on the bottom here. You hold the top of the camera, you loosen that knob, and then you watch the bubble until it lines up right in place. And once it's lined up, then you can tighten it. And now the camera's level. Now, we have two types of tripods. Hello, I'm, I'm, I'm down here now. I'm going to go ahead and show you the difference between this one and another tripod. Just like it was the other tripod you saw. When you open up a tripod bag, you should see the plate, the very top of the tripod in that bag. And hopefully that you can see that the quick release plate is in there, so you make sure you don't leave a tripod without some way to attach the camera. All right, so just as we did with the other tripod, let's take this one out of the bag. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to set it up at the height of the person that you'd be filming. So typically that would be at the eye level here. But the difference in this tripod, there are some differences. It does have the locking ring. So if we look in there, hopefully we can see the ring there. And then there is a strap to release that ring. But unlike the other tripod, instead of having levers to loosen the legs, you can see this one here has some knobs. Now the thing about knobs is, when you turn it counterclockwise, that's loosening it. And sometimes that's called to the left. When you turn it to the right, uh, that's locking it. And that's known as to, uh, <laughs> to the right, so it's locking it up. So the reason I'm laughing is, there's an old phrase that you've probably heard, and if not, it's a great way to remember which way to turn the knob. Lefty loosey and righty tidy. So let me go ahead and go lefty loosey on these. I'll hold the tripod here. And as we did with the other one, we'll let gravity do some work. So I've got the legs separated a little bit. I'm going to start with the bottom leg. There it goes. Now I'm going to go with the next leg, and it drops down. And we'll do the other, the other two. So two sections of each leg. And once I loosen it and let it drop, I'm tightening up those knobs again. And there it goes. And just like the other tripod, this one has a spreader. So when I separate the legs, I've got these uh, bars that keep it from spreading apart too far. All right, uh, another difference in this tripod, and I'm gonna go ahead and lower it down just a little bit so I can get it closer here and show you what it looks like as far as the quick release plate goes. Uh, let's see if I can get this down just a bit. And we'll do something similar to what we did on the other tripod. Uh, it does have a pan lock here, so we can loosen that knob, swing it around. I want to go ahead and loosen the lock for the pan handle. So I'll loosen that up. This one I have to loosen up a little bit more, and then position it, and then tighten it up. And again, never tighten, over tighten anything. You don't want it to uh, uh, damage it in any way. All right, let me go ahead and uh, spin this around and show you the difference here. Hopefully this will stay in focus as I do it. Let me, uh, unlike that lever that released the quick release plate on the other one, this one uses a knob and also a small uh, lever to pull. So, first you loosen the knob and then the plate will slide. But it won't slide all the way out. In order to get it all the way out, you hold this lever, and now you can just lift it right out. Just as with the other tripod, this one uses a screwdriver to be able to attach it to the camera. All right, I've got a little bit bigger camera this time, and uh, but we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We have to attach it just like the other camera. This one has a threaded hole on it to take a screw, and it has a, a, a plain hole on it to take the pin. So let me go ahead and take the plate out. Pull the lever, and I've got my, this time I'm using a quarter for the screwdriver. And I'm going to line up the screw and the pin. So let's see if I can show you that, but there's lining them up. And then I'll go ahead and start screwing it together. It's hard for me to screw it and also show it to you at the same time. Hopefully there, now it's holding enough, so hopefully you can see this as I just tighten it. And again, I just want to tighten it enough so it's secure to the camera, but I don't want to over-tighten it so that it's going to be either hard to get it off or it's going to damage the screw on there. Now the difference on this one also on the quick-release plate, notice that the lip is on the side here. It's not on the front, it's on the sides. And so, opposite from the knob, you want to put one of the lips in, and then you can push down and it will lock in place. Oops, <laughs> there it goes. So it's locked in place, but you notice it can still slide back and forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up. Let me see if I can show you the top of that so you can be a little bit clearer on this one. So I'll loosen it up, pull this off. I'll try to show you what it looks like in there. Uh, I don't know if you can see this part, but as I pull that slider, it releases it down. And that's kind of what clicks in place when I go ahead and put this in there. So let's go ahead and put the camera back in. I'll 
put the uh, lip on one side, clip it down, it's locked in there, and now I just need to go ahead and tighten up the uh, knob. All right, so it's in place. We're going to do the same thing we did before. Uh, this one also has a level bubble on it that you can look at. Let's see. I can turn it around to where you can see it a little bit. I know you can't see down, but this is the bubble down here. It's on the back of it. And again, I want to hold the top of the camera and then loosen this. Uh, let's see if you can see a little bit better. Here's a handle down here that I can twist. And I can move it around until I see that the bubble is right in the red circle. So it's an air bubble that you put right inside of a red circle and then tighten it back up. And now the camera is mounted. One thing you have to remember when you're all done with your camera, you need to pack the tripod up and put it back. So let's take a look at that. So let's say we're done using the camera today. I'm going to loosen this knob. take off the plate. That's the really important part. Some students forget to remove the quick release plate and put it back on the tripod. I always have you check when you get a tripod to see if that release plate's on there because if you leave uh, the tripod without its quick release plate, the next student who uses it will not be able to have anything to attach the camera to. All right, so we're just going to do the reverse here. Uh, I'll loosen up the pan. I want to get the pan handle uh, a little bit loose just so that it will be ready to be packed up here. And then I can go ahead and lift up on this spreader to pull the legs together. And, but I'm going to do the opposite this time. I'm going to go ahead and flip the tripod upside down. And now I can use gravity. So I'll start with the legs at the very top and just let it slide down. And then I can do the next section of that leg, let it slide down and just continue turning around. So I go with the top section of the leg, actually the very bottom, but I've got it upside down, and then the next section of the leg, I'm gonna let that drop down. Now this one didn't drop all the way down, so sometimes you have to kind of help it to get down. And then the last one, let's see, I'll start with this top section here, let it come down, and then do this section, let it come down. All right. The last thing I need to do is put that ring back on there. So remember the locking ring. This one had a locking ring too. And this is the tough part for me. I have to kind of look at it this way. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the circle is formed between the, uh, right between all the legs. And then you can go ahead and pull this strap out and just kind of pull it and set it in so it snaps in place. So you want to make sure it's locked together make sure that the head is on the tripod and then just return it to the bag and zip it up and that way the next time somebody looks in that bag they'll see that the tripod has the head attached.